Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for coming back and watching my video. Uh, we're gonna be going over uh, soft tissue trauma today. Uh, soft tissue. So first off, what is soft tissue? Well, soft, tish soft tissue is everything that's not your bones, your cartilage, or your teeth. Besides that, everything else is soft tissue. So that kind of simplifies this. All right, there's two types of injuries, open wounds and closed wounds for soft tissue trauma. I will be going over some closed wounds first, and then uh, open wounds, and then we have categories of fall in between both of them. So first off, let's go over what a contusion is. So what's a contusion? So a contusion. A contusion, that's really just a, a fancy word for a bruise. So whenever you see a bruise, that's a contusion. So it's a bruise, okay? Now what's going on with a contusion? What happens with a contusion, um, in case you don't know, we have, there's three layers to our skin. There's three different, excuse me, layers. You have your first layer, which is the epidermis. You have your second layer, right here, which is the dermis. Dermis. And then on the bottom of that, you have what's called the subcutaneous tissue. I'll put S T for subcutaneous tissue or fatty tissue. Um, so with the contusion, what happens is you get a pool of blood, a small pool of blood that builds up in the dermis section. Let's see if I have some purple. <clears throat> so the blood is building up right here in this region. What happens is after some kind of impact, minor trauma usually for a, a contusion, uh, tissue is tissue is destroyed in this region, and also some blood vessels are ruptured, and that what, that's what causes the blood to pool, causing a contusion. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is a hematoma. Now remember, these are all what I'm talking about right now. They're all closed closed wounds. All right. So closed injuries, soft tissue injuries. The next one is a contusion. I'm sorry, a hematoma over here so hematoma remember every time you see hema or hemo or just heme h-e-m think blood it's always gonna be blood all right so a hematoma is a big contusion as simple as that big contusion so it's a big contusion so what happens with the hematoma, just how tissue is, tissue is damaged and vessels are ruptured, um, this is also occurring with the hematoma, but it's in a bigger scale, okay? It's just happening on a, in a bigger region, bigger area, more tissue damage, bigger vessels are destroyed. Uh, one thing you should uh, remember for a hematoma is that you can lose up to a liter of blood. So a liter of blood loss. One liter blood loss. Okay, that's a big deal because on average we only carry between five liters and six liters of blood in our body. So we're gonna lose about twenty percent, twenty percent of our blood. Can we manage with that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it depends on on your health. If you take care of yourself, uh, your age, all that stuff, right? But so a contusion, hematoma. That's what's up with that. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is a crush injury. Now when I'm thinking of a crush injury, I think of the hole. So just imagine that you're playing baseball with the hole. The Hulk has a custom made bat. It's a bat. It's a big old bat just for him. Well you piss off the hook. That's not good. The Hulk decides to hit you with the big old bat. What happens is that, let's say that after when that impact occurred, so this right here is, we'll say that this is an abdomen. It's your abdomen because you were playing with the, uh, baseball with the hook and you pissed them off. And then the hook hits you, right? Well, even though that bat 
let's say it didn't destroy or it didn't uh, open the skin, even though it did not open the skin, energy is not destroyed, energy is transferred, all right? So when this hit the skin, the abdomen, the energy continued on inside your body, all right? That way the energy continues on, and the energy might actually be powerful enough to rupture an organ inside your body, such as your liver, your pancreas. That's a big deal because your solid organs are very vascular and you can bleed a lot. From your pelvic region, your pelvic region, your pelvis, up to your thoracic cavity up here, we can lose up to 13 liters of blood if we wanted to. If we wanted to pump some blood in there, uh, we can do about 13 liters. That's a big deal because that's more, uh, that's about half. I'm sorry, that's double. That's double of what we actually carry in our body. So we can lose a substantial amount of blood in there. So that's why that's a big deal. Um, so what happens is that the, the force with a crush injury, so a crush injury, is force from impact ruptures uh, internal organ uh, put an eye we're running out of space here internal organ or vessel okay and that is why a, uh, a crush injury is such a big deal it's a lot of force that force may not be big enough uh, uh, powerful enough to rupture the skin your skin is pretty tough but it, it might be uh, powerful enough to rupture a organ inside. All right, so now I am gonna go into what falls under both closed and open head injuries, okay? I am gonna go into a blast injury. So this is going to be for open and closed, all right, blast injury. So with the blast injury, there's four stages uh, to this, okay? First, the number, number one, you have the actual explosion, right? So let's say you are super, super adventurous and you decided, hey, you know what, for this year, how about I go to Syria because I'm awesome like that. That didn't scare me. And then you're walking down Syria um, and there was a bomb. The bomb exploded. Well, when the bomb explodes in front of you, the way the energy that comes from the explosion, that itself can cause tissue damage. So I'll put the waves, waves from blast. From blast. The second uh, injury that you may get is from projectiles flying out from that device or from whatever else was near that explosion. So projectile. And this is when you might get the actual open injuries. So in your bla the blast part, uh, it might just be still, you might still get some closed injuries, but uh, in the projectile stage, the second stage, that's when you might get some open injuries. Uh, projectiles, so projectiles flying out from the explosion going to your body. The third injury that you might get from this, or the third stage of an explosion, injuries from an explosion, um, will be your body actually hitting something, going on the, hitting the ground, hitting the wall, hitting a vehicle because you're walking down the street. Um, so it's your body, so body, uh, but hitting something. Because from this blast, it, it, the blast threw you back, right? And we'll, uh, right after the blast, the projectiles will follow, and then you fall eventually. And that's, that's hopefully you get the picture of what I'm trying to say. You know? uh, body hitting. Uh, that's spelled wrong, but I don't care. <laughs> it's okay. Hitting object. Okay. Um, then the fourth stage is going to be the hazards. So the hazards from the explosion, whether it's the smoke, if it's a, a mustard uh, 
bomb or mustard gas, something like that. Um, that's the fourth stage. Now, these are actually categorized as, so that the actual textbook words that you should know, uh, primary injury, so this is primary injury from a blast explosion. Primary secondary injury is uh, projectiles hitting the body. Secondary. Uh, tertiary. And I'm not gonna quants. I can't spell this. Quaternary. It's really weird. But I never use these words. Um, you should know the information. You should memorize the words. But I never bothered to learn um, this right here. I know the sequence. But as far as these words, you should know, especially leaving uh, EMT uh, school, you should definitely know all this verbiage. Down the road, you know, depending on what you specialize, if you want to forget some stuff, it's up to you. Alright, so we went from closed injuries, now we're in the blast, which it falls under open and closed injuries. So this is perfect to kind of lead me right into open injuries. So now we're going to be talking about open wounds and how to treat them, okay? So I'll leave this up here. All right. So first off, um, how about we go over an abrasion? So what's an abrasion? Abrasion. An abrasion is a fancy word for a scrape. So a scrape could be a rug burn, a road rash, a bush burn. Sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll hear it called, depending on where you are in the country. Um, just a layer of skin is brushed off. Okay, that's a rug burn. It could be pretty severe, pr pretty severe, but usually it's not. So that is what an abrasion is. So how do we treat this? So RX is what I use for treatment. First off, you clean it, all right? So clean it, brush it off, clean it off. You clean it, the second step is allow for it to dry. So then let it dry. And finally, dress it up with a sterile dressing. So I'll put it down here, just dress it up. Use a dressing, make sure it's sterile, all right? So abrasion is pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy. These are, all, these are all actually pretty easy and the steps are about the same for all open wounds with the exception of impelled objects and penetrating objects. All right, laceration is the next one. So what is laceration? A laceration, a laceration is a fancy word for a cut. Get cut, it could be a jagged cut, a smooth cut, like an, an incision cut. Um, but it's just a cut though, it's a cut. What we do for this is we, if we have to, we clean it off, you know, depending on the situation. So clean if you have to, okay? So clean, I'll put a question mark by it. And the reason I'm putting a question mark by it is because if the patient is spurting out blood, then we know it's an arterial bleeding. And I'm not gonna bother cleaning, I'm gonna stop the bleeding first, right? That's priority, uh, it's a life threat. So if you ever see a squirting bright red blood, uh, so don't worry about cleaning, just stop the bleeding first and then clean it if you have time, all right? So clean it if you have time, if it's not spreading out, your patient's not actively dying right now. The second stop is, the second thing is stop the bleeding. So stop the bleeding. Now, the way we stop the bleeding is with direct pressure. If it doesn't stop, then we use a tourniquet if it's on a limb. Um, if it's in the, th um, the torso area, you can use hemostatic agents. We don't do indirect pressure anymore. It doesn't really work and I don't bother with it. You're just wasting your time, really. All right, the second thing we do is, you know, maybe apply some bandages over that if we have to, so then uh, dress it up. All right, so we covered abrasions and lacerations. Let's go over an another one. Alright, so let's go over punctures. So a puncture could be a knife going into the body. It could be a gunshot wound. So if it's a knife, just uh, if it's a knife 
Keep in mind that the direction of the knife, what's behind that may not be the only thing that is damaged. For example, if the guy went in like this, uh, the person that was stabbing, let's, okay, scenario here. You went to the grocery store because you're super awesome. And you're like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. Uh, but let's say you live in the ghetto though, and, it, and it's not, it's kind of, it kind of sucks. Well, when you're leaving the grocery store in the ghetto, some cholo comes up and says, hey, I want your groceries because I'm hungry and I don't have a job. And you're like, no, I'm not gonna give you my groceries because I'm hungry. And he decides to stab you for your groceries. Well, if the knife went in like this, and then the knife could have kind of ringed up a little bit, and on its way up, it would uh, damage some more tissue, organs, uh, vessels, stuff like that. So keep in mind that, knife, that if the knife is implanted like this, it doesn't mean that only the organs or tissue behind that is are damaged. Just, it, it could have gone either way, okay? So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna take care of this patient is we're gonna apply pressure, put a bandage, clean it if we have to. Now, if the object remains intact, let's say that's, that's, that's the abdomen and this is closed up right here. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna make sure you keep the object in place, okay? So you're, you're not gonna take the object out. The reason we don't take out impaled objects that are physically in the body and that haven't been taken out yet is because the object that's in there might actually be holding pressure. For example, if, if it actually went through a vessel, it might be applying pressure on there. If you take it out and let's say it was in, in the liver, you're gonna provoke more bleeding. So that's why we leave it in place. We stabilize it. If we have to, we apply pressure around it evenly to stop whatever bleeding is occurring at the time. And then we just leave it in place and transport the patient. However, if the impelled object is in the mouth and the patient is bleeding profusely, profusely means a lot, and it's actually uh, impairing their airway and they can't breathe adequately, then that's the only time you should take it out, okay? And then apply pressure and hopefully it stops. If there's no serious trauma to their, their head and neck, you can put them in the recovery, let it drain out, um, figure it out. Uh, in EMS, you gotta think of your toes a lot. But yeah, just those are some scenarios that might happen. Now with the bullet, if it's a, a, a projectile going really fast, remember energy is transfer, right? Energy is constantly just leaving that bullet as it's transferring. So what happens is that when that bullet enters the body, um, cavitation could occur, pressure, creating a temporary cavity. When that temporary cavity is occurring, it might rupture an organ because of the pressure, the force behind that, okay? Uh, so I hit up penetrating traumas, how to, how to, how to uh, treat them. Now let's go over on avulsion, so on avulsion. Avulsion. This is a flap of tissue hanging out. So, let's see if I can make a decent drawing here. This would be an arm, and I'll make that, that's a fist by the way, right? I'm not sure. Super awesome drawing. There we go, that's a fist. All right, let's say that a chunk of skin is just, you know, skin, there's an epidermis, dermis, or some fatty tissue and some muscle just got torn off. Well, if it's torn off, but it's still hanging um, by some other tissue, by something else, that's an avulsion, something that came out of the body, but it's still kind of attached. This is a big deal because the parts that aren't attached, that the portion of the tissue that's not attached is not being oxygenated, so it's gonna die if, it, if not treated soon. So that's why that's a big deal. What we do for treatment for these people is we clean it as good as possible, uh, as much as you can out in the field. You would wanna put the flap back in place and then bandage it, okay? And that's how we treat avulsions in the field for we transport the patient. Now, an avulsion could even be an eye. So, if an eye comes out, it's a volt. The ears chop off and it's kind of just hanging there. It's a volt from the body. It's kind of just hanging there. It came out of the body. Okay, so it's not fully intact with the body. That's, that's an avulsion. Um, and now, an amputation. As far as an amputation, I'll keep this up here. Let's say these are fingers. Cut off the finger. That finger that got cut was cut off. So an amputation means that something was completely cut.
completely separated from the body, okay? The way we treat this is you wanna get the amputated part that came off of the body. If you have some kind of damp towel, but it's not too wet, wrap it around that, put it in some kind of bag, plastic, uh, a Ziploc bag would be perfect, and then put that Ziploc bag into some ice or something that really, really cold. Be careful, do not put the tissue directly against the ice. It's gonna damage the tissue and it might not be uh, salvageable. All right, so um, I kind of went over everything in a nutshell for soft tissue trauma. If you have any questions, uh, just leave them below. And also, if you want to keep on getting these videos, if you do like the videos, subscribe and you'll get a whole bunch. I am going to be making a lot more uh, once a week from now until November. And then once December hits, I'm going to be just making maybe every other day making one and hopefully it helps other people out. I wish I had these, this resource whenever I was going through my UT school. Um, all right, take care.